We don't have much of an option. We're not in Washington. We have to read the papers. We have to read the internet. We have to read somewhere. If they want to control information, it's controlled. And there's probably, it's what we don't know. If you think this is bad, it's what we don't know. The stuff we know is the stuff you want you to know. And if you're alive, they want you alive. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's no, the real good juicy stuff nobody's talking about. The stuff that we know is not the good juicy stuff. That's the stuff that's just to, supposed to shut down your, your parasympathetic nervous system and get you sympathetic. That's the stuff that's supposed to put you into fear mode and to put you into what's called learnt helplessness. Anybody ever heard this term, learnt helplessness? They have with rats. And the rats just give up. They say, you take care of me. So hopefully in the last little bit, I've given you a sense of the problem, so what's the solution? Because it's a game. It's all about restrictions, but it wouldn't be a game if you couldn't go get from point A to point B because it's only a game. Do you ever hear this, Bill? You ever hear Bill Hicks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Right. It's a choice. He talks about it being a ride. He calls it a ride. He says life is a ride. Well, whatever metaphor you want, the game, the the game is good because it talks about restrictions and talks about getting from point A to point B, and we can get from point A to point B. If there's a triangle of disease. There's a square of health. In the square of health, how much time do I have here, you guys? All right, 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> 20 minutes. So, do you, and do you have qu I'll definitely take questions. But I want you to leave with a sense of how powerful we are, not how disempowered we are. Because we are powerful. You ever hear that Nelson Mandela speech? He says, our biggest challenge is understanding how powerful, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he says, our biggest challenge is understanding how powerful we are. So we are powerful. Every time you, hear, every time you cut yourself, do you understand the miracle that happens every time we cut ourselves? I just told you about cells and the incredible nature of cells. The system is, please, this organic biocomputing suit that we ride in, it's beyond science fiction. This is an amazing ride we've got. So obviously we can heal and obviously we can grow and obviously we can survive. We wouldn't have made it this far if we couldn't. So what do we do? How do we access this, the, the power that's the human body? Well, if there's a triangle of disease, there's a square of health, and the square of health is nutriate, oxygenate, stress, and rest. Nutriate, oxygenate, stress, and rest. Starting with rest. Understand the power of relaxation. Relax at every turn, wherever possible. Relax the body, relax the mind, relax everything. You cannot do your best work when you are not relaxed. You can't fight the new world order when you're not relaxed. You can't take care of your kids when you're not relaxed. You have to understand how to relax. You have to be zen about the relaxation because you have to be observant and aware. But you can't be maximally observant and aware when you're not relaxed. So understanding the relaxation response is important, but it has to be spiked with stress. It has to be spiked with intervals of stress. In terms of the body, you have to figure out a way to give yourself some physical duress. And that could be walking up the stairs. It could be doing sprints. If you're in a, in a gym, if you're working out in a gym, it means sprinting, not jogging. 30 seconds. You know how to get a good workout, to get a good, a uh, cardio workout to get a good physical workout, you need two minutes. Two minutes. You do it on the stairs. Two minutes. Run up the stairs two or three times. Guarantee that's enough. Plenty. That's the way the body likes to have stresses. It likes quick bursts of stresses, physical stresses. Emotionally and mentally, same idea. Challenge yourself. I named a, I named a disease after my dad. Called old man's disease. <laughs> You don't have to be an old man to get it. You could be a woman and you could be young and get it. Old man's disease is, I named this after him. Maybe you guys can relate to it if you have a dad or granddad. Old man's disease is when you know everything. You know exactly how everything is. You know a history and you know politics and you have opinions on everything and you are right because you're old. That's called old man's disease. And the problem with old, old man's disease, is that all right? Did I, I hope I'm not offending anybody here. Old man's disease. If you have old man's disease, it means you're contracting and you're running high risk for Alzheimer's disease. 
because your brain runs best with a little bit of stimulation. So learn a new language, travel to a different country, play a musical instrument, do crossword puzzles. Those are the people who don't get Alzheimer's disease if you're challenging your brain. Challenge your emotions. Challenge everything in your body quickly and maximize the rest that follows. And then make sure you're oxygenating. Deep breathing at all turns. Deep breathing is unspeakably important. As I said, the water, the three, you go three to five days without water. Food, 30 days, 40 days without food. More without food. But you're only going three minutes without oxygen. If you want to activate the, parasymp or the sympathetic nervous system, the stress nervous system, just go without oxygen. Anybody get panic attacks in this room? What happens right before your panic attack? Exactly. Exactly. You have problems breathing. If you want to bust the cycle, start practicing deep breathing quickly. Learn deep breathing. You want to, and what's your name, sir? Johnny. So you want to know what Johnny feels like for those of us who don't get panic attacks, you know what Johnny, if you want to know what Johnny feels like, if you want to empathize with Johnny, hold your breath. And then when it's time to breathe again, don't breathe. Now you'll force, your body is not, you're, you're an organism and the body has a mind of its own and it will make you breathe. But for that second when you're trying to override it with your will, you'll get all jittery and you'll get all freaky and you'll get a friggin' panic attack. And that's how powerful it is. But we don't have to be suffocating in order to experience a panic attack. We can be shallow breathing and suffering from long-term sustained subclinical panic attacks. Little microscopic panic attacks. Wil Wilhelm Reich, anybody hear Wilhelm Reich? Yes. Wilhelm Reich was a brilliant physician from the 1930s and 40s and 50s, ended up dying in jail, of course, because he had the nerve to say that everything was an orgasm. He said the world was run by an orga one big orgasm, and if you're sick, you're not plugged into the cosmic orgasm. I'm not kidding you. He said that. He said he could cure cancer by ta having people talk. He called it orgone energy, and they put him in jail. In the winter, I have dirty old man's disease. What's that? Dirty old man's disease. That's different. That's <laughs> good, though. I'm going to remember that. That's good. I like that. I like that. That's a branch. Okay, that's good. I appreciate that. All right. So anyway, so you got to practice the deep breathing. It's critically important. It lowers stress hormones. It improves your ability to fight disease. And it's so friggin' simple and free to do. It's obscene. It's obscene. It's so easy to do, and you improve every single marker of health with something as simple as deep breathing. Okay, and that's ironically we've known about for thousands of years. Yes. Okay, and then there's the last, the last part is the nutrition part, which is what I actually love the most is the nutrition part. You notice I didn't even mention nutrition yet, and that is what I personally love the most. But compared to everything else, compared to feeling safe compared to being out of survival mode, compared to being in thrival mode, compared to the anabolic, catabolic equation, compared to the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. It, really, nutrition is almost the smallest part. Oxygenation, uh, nutrition is almost like the smallest part, but it's still very, very important. You see, we are energetic beings, and we need to have energy to drive the chemistry of our body. Energy is basically run through a system, and it is ridiculously beautiful and intricate and complex and technical and it's just it's absolutely mind-blowing how it all works but the, the long, short story is sugar or some derivative thereof is burnt and energy comes out of it that's basically how we're fueled sugar or protein that's turned into sugar of some sort is burnt, just like I was talking earlier about the fire in the sugar factory. Sugar is burnt. Do you ever put a marshmallow in a fire? What happens to that? It goes poof. That energy is somehow channeled, listen up, because this is super cool. That energy of a burnt marshmallow is somehow channeled into chemistry. Magically channeled. The, the uh, explosive energy is called macro nutrition. And the magical pixie dust that directs that macronutrition into the right chemistry is called micronutrition. Macronutrition we know as proteins and carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are actually fats and sugars. Both fats and sugars are carbohydrates, technically speaking. And so energy in the body is derived from kindle from wood, protein, and uh, uh, carbohydrates. And then pixie dust, uh, is sprinkled on the wood and poof, these energetic reactions occur that are specifically channeled into uh, biochemistry. Here's the important point to take home. If you have the macronutrition fire without the micronutrition pixie dust, 
the explosions become chaotic. The job of the pixie dust is to direct the energy into the right reactions. Without the pixie dust, you just get this explosive chaotic energy, and that is not good. And over the last 200 years, what we've figured out how to do in all of our evil genius kind of ways is divorce the energy from the pixie dust. And so we, we're, our bodies are running, are trying to run on chaotic energy without having the pixie dust to direct the chaotic energy into the right biochemistry. We have a pixie dust deficiency. We are suffering from pixie dust deficiency health issues. So we have plenty, do you understand how I'm, I'm wording this? Am I doing okay with this? Because yeah. <laughs> this is a very important metaphor to get because this really tells you what nutrition is about. It's about energy that's then channeled into the most incredibly complex and intricate biochemistry via magical pixie dust that we call vitamins and minerals. And it all starts with the soil. It all starts with the soil. So. It's absolutely imperative, as unpleasant as it is, in my humble opinion, you may disagree, but I've been studying this for many, many years. It's absolutely imperative that we support our food with supplements.